In this lecture, we will go through some of the basic weather phenomena and how they affect air pollution. Here is a view from Beijing on a smoggy day, and then the same view after rain. What has happened? The precipitation has cleaned the atmosphere. The water droplets falling from the sky have removed largely the air pollutants from the air. This implies weather phenomena have significant effect on air quality. Water is everywhere in the atmosphere. You see it in the clouds as cloud droplets and ice crystals. Rain affects your everyday life. You see water in sea and lakes, but also vegetation consists largely of water and is part of the circulation of water. What you don't see is the water vapor that is present everywhere in the atmosphere. So water is in the atmosphere in all of its three phases, ice, liquid and gas. Only 0.3% of the mass of the atmosphere is water that responds to a 3 cm layer on the ground if all water of the atmosphere would be con condensed to the ground. However, water in the atmosphere is crucially important. First, water is the most important greenhouse gas, responding to 60% of the greenhouse effect and thus enabling the life on Earth. Second, it contributes largely to the heat transfer of the Earth system. Large amounts of energy is reserved and released by condensation and evaporation of water. When water evaporates, large amounts of energy is needed and reserved and when it condenses to closed droplets, for example, large amounts of energy is released. That contributes to the heat transfer and affects the flow dynamics of the atmosphere. Third, weather phenomena are often related to water, like rain, clouds and fog. Types of clouds vary. We have ice clouds in the upper troposphere and liquid clouds in the lower troposphere. Cumulonimbus clouds extend throughout the troposphere. They freeze from the top, leading to intense precipitation and thunder. Nimbus stratus clouds are related to mid-latitude weather systems and continuous precipitation. Fog is condensed water in the air close to the ground. Fog can form when heat radiation cools the surface at night in still nights when the air is moist enough. Fog can also be formed when the warm, moist air is advected over a cool surface, like over ocean in spring, or when cold air mixes with humid air, like in summer nights over a lake. Also, evaporating rain droplets can form a fog or an open sea evaporating in a cold winter day, called as sea smoke. There are three main types of precipitation. Convective precipitation, where warm air rises, water condenses, and precipitates. Sometimes the rising of the air is forced by the surface, and orographic precipitation is formed uphill mountains. After the mountain, the air is dry and warm, and dry fern wind can be observed. Also, in the mid latitude weather systems, Warmer subtropical air is forced to rise above colder polar air, forming continuous long-term precipitation. Here is a classic illustration of a mid-latitude weather system. Air flows counterclockwise around a low-pressure system in the northern hemisphere, bringing warm air from the subtropics northwards and cold air from the polar areas southward. Where these warm and cold air masses meet, frontal zones are formed where warm air rises above cold air and precipitation is formed. These mid-latitude weather systems are continuously formed in the mid-latitudes, affecting largely the daily and weekly weather in these areas. Here is an example of a mid-latitude weather system affecting the transport of forest fire smoke from Eastern Europe to Finland, reaching even Svalbard in May 2006, as seen from a 
second light. And here is another example of a mid-latitude weather system affecting largely the smog situation in China in 2010.